Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel. In this video, we're going to be doing another example of electromyography where we're going to be figuring out where, anatomically speaking, the damage is occurring. We actually did another example of this in the previous video, so if you'd like more on that, go back and watch that. But we're going to be figuring out where the damage is. If you're concerned about what all this stuff is over here, these were covered in even more previous videos where we talked about axonal injury, demyelination, and all that. So for this, we're going to be restricting our view to really the muscles right here, and then the nerves and the nerve roots that correspond to the given nerves. So the first question we're going to ask ourselves is, do we think there's nerve root involvement? And by nerve root involvement, I'm thinking radicular symptoms, radiculopathy, where we actually have some kind of compression or physical damage to the nerve root, like the C7 nerve root, C8 nerve root, and all that, right? And so if all the muscles with a common nerve root were affected, then we're starting to think more radiculopathy. So let's first consider the C8 nerve root. Okay, so we look at this first muscle. This is the first dorsal interosseous muscle. Yeah, that has C8 nerve root contributions and it's negatively affected. We look at the abductor digiti minimi. That also has C8 nerve root contributions. It's also negatively affected. We look at the flexor digitorum profundus that innervates really the fourth and fifth digits. That also has C8 nerve root contributions and it's negatively affected. And we can actually say the same thing for the T1 nerve roots, right? The problem is, is if we go to the next few muscles, those also have C8 nerve root contributions, but those are not negatively affected. Those are all normal across the board. And actually, if you look, every single one of these muscles in this list has some degree of C8 contribution. Uh, most of them are half C8. And because some of the muscles here have C8 nerve root contributions, but they're not affected, in fact, more than half of them, we're not thinking radicular symptoms. We're not thinking compression at the nerve root level. We're thinking something more peripheral nerve related or at least distal to the nerve roots. And then once we know that, we're going to ask, is the damage appearing to be proximal to the elbow or distal to the elbow? Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, the reason this is important to consider is because if the damage was more proximal to the elbow, that makes it more likely that we're looking at something within the brachial plexus, all this convoluted stuff in here, right? But if the damage was distal to the elbow, then it's more likely that the brachial plexus has already become its terminal branches. And so we're thinking strictly ulnar nerve, median nerve, radial nerve, maybe even the interosseous nerves. We're not having to look at all this convoluted stuff here in the brachial plexus if it's distal to the elbow. So looking up here, where is the damage? The damage is first dorsal interosseous, that's in the hand, abductor digiti minimi, uh, that muscle's in the hand as well. And then flexor digitorum profundus, that is the components that control digits four and five, uh, that muscle belly is actually in the forearm. But the point is, is all three of these affected muscles are distal to the elbow. So what I'm thinking about doing here is simply getting out a picture or drawing a picture of the upper extremity and looking at the order that the motor branches come off of those nerves uh, to the particular muscles, and then diagnosing it that way. I'll show you how that's done in just a minute. Now, with these three muscles, what nerve am I going to be looking at most likely? And all three of them have the ulnar nerve as something in common. So I'm going to be looking at the ulnar nerve. Now you say, well, this muscle down here, a flexor carpi ulnaris, also has ulnar nerve innervation, but it's normal, right? That doesn't matter. I'm just considering the sites where there's impairments. And all three of them have ulnar nerve contributions, so I'm going to be looking at the ulnar nerve. Okay, so let's now go to a picture of the ulnar nerve, or you could draw something that looks like this. So with the ulnar nerve, remember that from the brachial plexus, it does have contributions C8 and T1. That's not important here, right? Here's the axilla. No branches come off in the axilla. In the brachium or arm, there is one branch that comes off that we don't care about here. That's a cutaneous branch that goes to supply sensory uh, information from the elbow joint. And then we see the various branches that come off. And from proximal to distal, the first one is flexor carpi ulnaris. 
The second one is to flexor digitorum profundus. Uh, that is going to be the medial half of the muscle, the ones that uh, control digits four and five. And we keep going down here distally, gives off a bunch of cutaneous branches. We don't care about that. We get to the hand. There's a bunch of muscles controlled by the ulnar nerve here. We only care about the muscles that are given in the question. So which ones are left that were given in the question? The first dorsal interosseous, which is the most distal, and then the abductor digiti minimi. So let's find those. So abductor digiti minimi is part of that hypothenar eminence. That's right here. Okay. And then here's the interossei, uh, some of the terminal branches right there. Okay. So what am I going to do now? Well, I'm going to do something very similar to what we did in the brachial plexus video, previous video, where we basically put one of these X's or a mark on every single location that had an impairment. All right. Well, where were the impairments? First dorsal interosseous, abductor digiti minimi, and flexor digitorum profundus, the medial half. So that's what I'm going to do. So here's my flexor digitorum profundus. That had an impairment, right? We put an X right there. Abductor digiti minimi also had an impairment. Now, there's also some other muscles here. However, I'm just going to put that X right there. Again, remember, not everything is tested. And then also the first dorsal interosseous muscle, I'm just going to put that X right here. It doesn't really matter for our purposes. Okay. Now that we've pictorially identified where the impairments are, now I can deduce where the damage might be. Okay. So if I asked you, could the damage be right here, your answer should be no. And the reason is because this motor branch that's coming off uh, to the flexor digitorum profundus medial half is occurring proximally to this damage. And so if we had, let's say, a lesion right here, it would certainly produce these two impairments, right? But it would not produce this impairment because this impairment's proximal uh, to where the damage is. So at the very least, our damage to the ulnar nerve has to be about right here because uh, this is proximal to all three of these impaired sites, these motor branches that are coming off, right? And the number two, our other thing that we can do to check ourselves is we can trace these back and as long as they all share uh, this common damaged site, uh, then we're good, right? So if we go back from the inner ossei right here and trace it back, yeah, we get to that site. If we go back from the abductor digiti minimi, these hyperthenar muscles, and trace it back, yeah, we get to the site. And then certainly if flexor digitorum profundus, we get back to the site. So this is actually a very possible region uh, for where the damage to the ulnar nerve exists. So that's the basic answer. Now, one more thing, this is just a side note. One of the most common sites for ulnar nerve damage is really in the elbow as the nerve goes to the cubital tunnel. And you'll notice here where I've moved this, uh, this is actually now proximal to the motor branch that goes off to flexor carpi ulnaris. But remember, this muscle's activity was spared, right? How could this be? Well, sometimes the flexor carpi ulnaris is spared because it gets so many motor branches. It's a much larger muscle than any of these over here. So potentially you could still have uh, the nerve lesion or damage right here and it still only produced these three impairments while sparing the flexor carpi ulnaris. That's a little bit beyond the scope. But at the very least, for most purposes, if you're watching this video, you'd be sufficient saying that the damage was at the very least right here. Okay, Although it could be up here and it just spared the flexor carpi ulnaris. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding about how to use electromyography to deduce where the nerve damage is if the damage is assumed to be distal to the elbow and then we don't have to use the brachial plexus. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff. And a big thank you to my patrons on Patreon for your contributions to my channel.